Hello everyone, it's Matt from the Armchair Armoury and I've got something wonderful to show to you today. Now as many of you may know, we offer custom sculpting and medals as part of our range at the Armoury. We make a lot of things in aluminium and brass and bronze and copper metal powder. And the thing that I'm going to show you today is one of our brand new custom commissions a pair of cloak clasps or cloak pins I suppose that we are making in bronze and I'm going to be attaching um, some very heavy duty brooch pins to the back and also a nice bronze chain so have a look at these I think they're both in focus but these are commissioned um, from a wonderful group in Wintermark and uh, and Steve, who you may know as Hefty Yeti, he has his own Twitch stream. Um, I highly recommend. And uh, we are making these for his group. So what I'm actually going to show you in this video is how I take a sculpt that I have cast in metal powder in this sort of boring matte um, brown and grey colour how I take them from that, and uh, I will put in a nice close-up picture of them now, to this, which is the finished product. So let's get to it, shall we? Now I'm going to talk you through it and, uh, and basically let you know how much love and affection we put into our sculpts at the Armoury. So first of all, what these are is they are polyester or polyurethane resin with metal powder in them and the metal powder when it's upside down and in a mold sinks to the bottom so what you need to do is you need to break the surface of the cast so that you break through the top layer of resin and you um, What's the word? You show up, you reveal, reveal is a good word, you reveal the metal underneath. Now, you can do this with wire wool. Um, I tend to use some 3M fleece. Um, you can sand them back. Uh, a lot of the ones I do, I cast in solid resin um, with a sort of fiberglass. Um, reinforcing agent so I can I could sand all the way through I could get rid of this bore I could sand all the way through and then break through the surface again and polish it up and the back plate you would see would be just as shiny as if the bore was there however if you're doing it um, as usual in something thin that you back with a fiberglass or a carbon fiber then you're not going to be able to go too far with your breaking through because you might go through all of your resin and go into the backing material behind. Now basically what you want to do is you want to reveal all of the highlights. Now I like to get in all the nooks and crannies, I like to get everything as sort of high shine as I can in this early stage, but you don't have to because of the last process we do which is adding a wax which acts as a sealant and a protector for the piece but it also darkens everything and it's um, a bit like doing a dark wash when you're painting it it darkens the background and sort of reveals the front so I'm going to power through these and I will talk to you again at the next stage. So, as you will see, I've now broken through the surface and it's come up a lot more it's sort of satin now, I suppose. It's not quite high gloss, but it's definitely, it's got a shine to it. 
And now if you were doing something that was antique bronze, you could probably leave it at this stage because it's sort of dulled down and it's not quite as high gloss as it will get. But the next stage is polishing. There are lots of different polishes you can use. Um, you can use Brasso, uh, but basically any polish or any metal polish um, will do. So I've got a little tub here. Now I, I brush it on. I'm quite liberal with my polish. Um, I've got just a regular bristle brush and a uh, old cotton shirt that I use as my polishing rag and I brush it on. You want to get in all the nooks and crannies. You want to get in everywhere and hopefully I'm doing this where you can see it. Yep. Yeah. You want to really work it in there. And for mine at the minute, I don't want to do the back because I am attaching a pin. So I would have to, if I get polish and wax on the back, I'm then going to have to take it off again. So usually I would do the whole thing, um, but in this case, I'm not. So really work it in there. And then we rub it off. As you can see, it's getting a shine, but you this is the stage that takes the longest. You've really got to get in there and you've got to work that polish in so that it's really bringing out the highest gloss finish you can. There we have some very highly polished bronze medals. Now you'll notice I haven't polished everywhere. I've mainly focused on the highlights, but I haven't got the background too much. Now, if you were just leaving it a polish, that would be an issue. You really should go in maybe with a, a wheel or a mop um, and get all those areas. However, my next stage I will show you exactly why I don't do that. Now with a, another brush, I have a black metallic wax that I use. And a bit like the polish, you brush it in everywhere. Now this you have to get it in all of the crevices because this is the final top coat this acts as a protective layer for the piece and it also gives it its finished look so bits like in the tail there between the mouth between the tips of the feathers you really want to get it in because if you don't get it in there you are going to notice a pale brown patch that you won't have been able to wire wool or to fleece and that won't have any polish on so it will be like you've not done anything to it so really work that in as hard as you can and take your time with it and once that's done Make sure you get all round the edges as well. What you do is you put that to the side. And then, this is why I usually work on a couple at a time. I do a big run of them. You then start another one. 
because what you want is you want that wax to bake you want it to cook on to the surface now this is the sort of stuff you use on um, cast iron gratings like fences or um, cookers and it's it's a protective wax and what they'll do is it they'll just paint it on and that will be it this will go rock solid if I was to leave these as they are now without rubbing it off it gives you a very nice dark old sort of old penny brown bronze kind of look and it can be very effective for um, for that sort of a look however I use it to highlight and add depth to my work so by the time you've done a second or a third I usually do about five in a row or so make sure I keep moving back hope I hope I'm keeping this in and you can actually see it make sure you get really in those areas see at the minute I can still see that brown in between the legs now you want to be sparing with this you don't want to use loads because if you if you leave it if I was to just flood in those legs with this wax I'd, it would make them all dark and it would look great but it will stay there and it will go rock hard and you'll have an area of just solid wax so you want to be as um, yeah you don't want to use a lot but you want to make sure it gets in there because you don't want a sort of fluffy kind of painted edge look that is pretty good to me so now usually I would suggest using an entirely new rag um, but I've got a clean area of mine I would suggest using an entirely different rag for your polish and your wax and then your final buff so let me just get a close-up so you can So it's pretty dark, but it's still shiny. And then what you're going to do, once that's had a bit of a bake and a cook, and you're happy with it, is you're going to polish the high spots. And the good thing about this technique is all the areas you can't get that you weren't able to get with your fleece that you're not able to get with your polish they will all be left dark and because the wax I use is metallic they will all look shinier than they did before so it all brings it together now with bronze and this is uh, specifically to Steve and to his hall now bronze dulls very quickly so what you will probably want to do is once an event you'll want to get a clean cloth and just buff the edge you won't need to add any product um, you will just want to buff it to re-shine it um, the aluminium ones that we do almost never need a rebuff um, I've got the the plaque just in front of me that's got one of all the armies and that's been on the wall and been to shows with us and I've had that for about three years now and uh, I haven't needed to buff them up at all they stay shiny but bronze as it oxidizes very much like real metal because it is real metal powder in these casts it will dull so and what you will also find is you'll probably need two buffs so I'll do the first buff take off the majority of the excess wax 
Look at that. And then I will go and I will do a second buff because that's still quite dark. The chains that you see uh, on the table are our bronze rings that we make. Eight, they're 8mm eight and they're phosphor bronze, so they are solid bronze. Um, they are quite soft, but they are still strong. Um, and ideally, I will be colour matching as well as I can these brooches to the chain that goes between them. There will be a difference uh, because they are different metals or different materials, um, but the hope is that they will look at least complementary together, if not the same colour. there you have it hopefully that's been a nice little show off of how we make our pieces but I'll get a nice picture of these so you can see them in slightly better light and that has been a, uh, well, a sort of proto tutorial of how I take my casts from dull grey all the way to shiny metal thank you very much for watching and i hope you enjoyed that steve thank you very much for commissioning me for these i hope your haul enjoys them when you get them and i will see you later have a lovely day <laughs>